Hey everyone, I am on today to respond to Mixtress Ray. She has put out uh, a few recent videos where she gets down and dirty and very real about her struggles with what she calls the dark side of tarot deck collecting. Um, she talks about her compulsive consumption, especially when it comes to spending on decks and, you know, the pull of capitalism and how this is all taking a toll on her finances and on her tarot practice. And I just really appreciated her perspective. And I think that capitalism is something that we can all, I mean, it's something that we all contend with. It's the society we live in. And then you throw compulsive consumption on top of that. And <laughs> That is a legit, a legit struggle that uh, many people in this community are navigating. And um, it's something that many of us can certainly relate to on some level. And I think that evidence of this kind of compulsive consumption, um, well, it takes the form of tarot deck collecting because that is what we love. That is our passion, you know, tarot. But um, Mixtress Ray also discusses in her video her, um, which I will I will leave a link to the very first one um, that I think she titles like Deck Collecting or Tarot Deck Capitalism. I'll leave a link anyway. Uh, but she discusses in that video that her other obsession that um, kind of sucks up all her money is perfume. And so I think that's important that you know, we kind of put this in the broader context of um, the idea that this struggle can easily transfer from one category to another. So whether that's decks or crystals or fabrics or journaling supplies, you know, it, it's, it's not um, tarot deck collecting and purchasing in in themselves are not the problem it's it's a much more complex topic i have notes why am i not looking at my notes see this is what happens because then i just i don't know what the fuck i'm saying okay so of course i'm going to be speaking in the context of tarot because hello tarot channel but um before I go on, I really want to put out some disclaimers. You know, for those of you who don't struggle with these things, you don't struggle with compulsive consumption or deck overwhelm or, you know, you love your collection. You have no problems with your spending. You've got a good process and, you know, it's th these things just don't occur to you and you're perfectly happy, then that is outstanding. And this video will not be very interesting to you. So I totally understand. But um, this video is for those who do have these struggles. And, um, you know, maybe they've been told or they've been made to feel as if they're overreacting, you know, like, what's the big deal? It's just decks. But um, you know, the point is that oftentimes it's not just about the decks. It's about something much larger, a much larger underlying issue or issues, which by the way, I am not a psychologist. I just play one on TV. So this is all just me giving you my opinions and my perspective. Okay. I am not trying to, uh, piss on anyone's purchasing parade or deck collection. I don't give a cat's turd if you have two decks or 2,000 decks. I, I don't care. I don't care what you spend your money on. I, you know, how little or much you have is, um, doesn't say anything about how good or not good of a tarot reader or witch or whatever, however you identify yourself. Like, I, I don't think there's that correlation. I don't think yeah, the number of items you have says makes you more or less of a tarot reader or a witch or 
whatever. So I consider myself a deck collector. I love deck collection videos and haul videos and walkthroughs and I also love anti-hauls and calling videos. I, I, I love them all. Um, I have about 50 decks total uh, which some might think is a large number, some might think it's not. It's um, it's a comfortable spot for me. Uh, so this is including Terracle, Terracle. Hmm, I like that. I like that name. Tarot, Oracle, Lenormand, playing cards. Um, and I think this even includes a couple decks that I don't even have yet. I, I've pre-ordered them or back them on Kickstarter. But anyway, I have spoken in previous videos um, about my growing tendencies to kind of mindlessly purchase decks and my process for trying to work that out. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, whatever it is that you're collecting, whether it be tarot or books, your collection should be bringing you joy. Um, it should be, it shouldn't be a source of stress. And I think that's where each of us has our own threshold. And when you pass that threshold where the joy turns into a, a more negative feeling, you know, that's, that's something to investigate because if instead of joy, your collection is bringing you um, some legit consequences, um, you know, you're, you're, you're suffering consequences to your finances, um, in your re relationships with other people, in relationship, in your relationship with tarot. Um, you know, you are feeling guilty or overwhelmed or frustrated with yourself. You know, these, these are kind of red flags that they're, could possibly be something larger going on here, something more complex going on here, and um, that these are shadows to maybe investigate. You pull out one of the tarot decks you have or oracle decks and um, really explore that. I will try to remember to link to my previous videos on uh, deck calling, but in those videos, I do touch on some strategies that I was practicing and still do practice. Uh, when it comes to trying to curb my mindless and compulsive consumption. And on this video, I, I wanted to present a few more strategies that I've been using to help me out. Uh, so the first one is tracking. Uh, I do have a Libib app that's on my phone where I track my current deck collection as it stands. Um, but then I also have a notebook. So isn't this cute? <laughs> it was a gift. Anyway, okay. So I have been using this to be a little more detailed in my tracking. Uh, Hazel Jane from Hazel Jane Tarot, she put out a video that was actually a VR to Mixtress Ray, where she takes you through her spreadsheet and the way she tracks her deck purchases. And I think that's very helpful. I will link that as well. And I am also a lover of spreadsheets, but I have found that actually when it comes to tarot, uh, writing it down has been more useful. So this is what I use for like the more nitty gritty when it comes to tracking the purchases that I've made, um, decks that I've rehomed, decks that um, I have received as gifts, you know, decks on my wish list, etc. So I have them in different categories and it really, um, it keeps me honest. It keeps me honest and accountable and it allows me to um, keep track of patterns um, because 2021 has been a pretty shit year for me. I'm not going to lie. Much worse, in my opinion, than 2020, in my experience. <laughs> and using this, I could definitely see the pattern. Um, 
you know, first shit storm rolled around in like late March, April. And then there was another one in like May through June. And there was definitely a correlation, definitely an uptick in my spending and my, my deck purchases. I, what I try to do now is that if I want a deck, I try my best to at least wait a week or so uh, to see if I still want it. You know, I will write it down. So actually I have, I write it down in my Hobonichi planner uh, along with just actually um, all my kind of temptations. I have created a retail temptation list and I track everything that tempts me. <laughs> Um, every kind of fun thing that I would like to buy. And um, not only is this eye-opening to just kind of see some of the stupid shit that I want to buy, but um, yeah, it, it's just, it's a way for me to um, kind of deflect the, the quick knee-jerk reaction to buy a deck uh, right away. I'll write it on here and then, um, you know, and wait. And if it turns out that I still, I still want the deck, but maybe I've decided I'm gonna wait, I will then transfer it here into the wish list category, the wish list section. And so right now in terms of wish list, I only have, um, I think like four, four decks, one, two, three, four, yeah, four decks that I'm still um, keeping an eye out on, like gauging whether I, I really, really want it. Um, and aside from those four, there were 24 decks from my retail temptation list that I did not buy. That is that is a win, right? For me, that is a win. Um, and again, also telling in terms of just the patterns that I have, you know, when I'm stressed and how that takes form. And so um, I, you know, I want to be very clear, retail therapy, uh, comfort shopping, whatever you want to call it, is in itself not innately a bad thing. But I think that, um, you know, where it becomes more of a red flag is when um, it becomes really, it, it becomes compulsive. It becomes compulsive and mindless and to the point where, like I said, you know, um, you kind of reap some negative consequences or um, uh, negative feelings because of that. Another strategy that I've been using to kind of ride out these shitstorm waves uh, is to find distractions that don't involve shopping. So this is, I feel, a very kind of common um, strategy where you're, you're replacing one habit with another, right? And so for me, um, if I would have the urge to buy a deck, I would write it down, write it down on my retail temptation list, and then take out the deck that I've been working with or a deck that I haven't worked with in a while. And I will work with one of my decks instead. I will, I would find a spread on Instagram or one of my books and just work with one of the decks I have. Say I'm like watching a tarot video and I'm watching a walkthrough or a review and it's tempting me. Um, I will journal, um, you know, work on my journal, my layouts or, 
something where I can、um, kind of enjoy something creative while still listening to that tarot tuber,、um, f- finding joy from their joy because that's part of you know why I like. Watching walkthroughs and first impressions is because I see and I can hear at least the the tarot tubers I follow. I hear the joy in their voices and the excitement, and that gives me joy.、Um, so I can still experience that and look at the deck, but not be so engrossed in it because I'm I'm、um, distracting myself with something else that's that's creative. So I will do a journal layout or I will、uh, color. So lately, I have been.、Um, my friend made this cute little coloring book for me a couple of years ago. So I've just been coloring,、um, you know. And these don't take a lot of time to do, so it's a very kind of quick and minor distraction.、Um, so yeah, coloring unicorns and、um, cat butts. That that's been helpful. So、um, the final strategy, and I would say a very important one that I would offer, is to surf the urge. And this is not a term that I've come up with. I think it's a it's a psychology or yeah, it's a psychology strategy.、Um, and and the whole idea of it, I don't think there's like one specific way to do it. But how I know to do it and how I've been practicing is that instead of trying to avoid the urge. You know the the temptation or the craving to compulsively spend, buy another deck, whatever. You instead of avoiding it, you confront it. You confront that discomfort. You sit with it. You take notice of it. And I think that's、um, I think that's really important to be able to address that and to sit with that struggle and to feel those feelings instead of trying trying to constantly suppress them or evade them, and、um, it's a it's a muscle that needs exercising, and it gets it does get easier. It it does get easier, at least from my experience.、Um, but what I do is that、um, I. I'm a fidgeter. I fidget, so I, I do use prayer beads or mala beads. So when I feel the kind of mindless compulsion to buy a deck, I will sit with those feelings. You know, take note of what I'm thinking and what's going on in my head,、um, and also maybe some of the physical reactions that I have. Which for me manifests in like all up here.、Um, I get a bit of pressure behind my eyes,、um, and and sometimes even like I notice that my breath is a little a little shallower.、Um, something I wouldn't normally notice, but you know when I、um, am sitting with these feelings,、um, you you do make a sharper observation that these things. Are happening, and then you alternate that with periods of、um, mindful breathing and meditation.、Um, so again, I the way I meditate、um, is through usually prayer beads and mala beads because I am a fidgeter, and so I will focus on my breathing,、um, try to kind of calm my mind by using my beads. But you don't need to. You don't. Have to use beads. You can use a stress ball or like one of those squishy toys. You can use a stuffed animal. You can you can shuffle a deck.、Um, you could stare into a candle flame. You can do. You don't even have to do if you don't need anything. If you're not like a fidgeter or if you're not one、um, that gets easily distracted by that stuff, then just meditate. You know, just focus on your breathing, and then revisit your body. How are you feeling?、Um, still feeling that discomfort? Still feeling that stress? Okay, sit with it. Notice it.、Um, is it as strong as before? Is it diminishing? And then you go back to your breathing or your meditation, and、um, 
it's really, it, it doesn't really even take that long. I think, you know, depending on how much you struggle with um, compulsion, it might take longer, um, but I've noticed that really it just, just a couple minutes of doing something like this really helps me out. So for those of you who feel like you you are struggling with this on some level, compulsive consumption and um, as it pertains to debt collecting or whatever, um, but, but you don't maybe know where to start with unpacking that, I do have a few questions that I've written down that I have certainly asked myself. And so these are questions that, um, you know, as you feel resonates, you can journal about or think on, uh, and maybe some or all of them will help you. I don't know, but I offer them to you. Number one, when you imagine your ideal collection, what do you envision that makes you feel peaceful and happy? And I want you to get very detailed in terms of like what you imagine in your mind, or if you're journaling about it, um, just write down, be as detailed as you can. Number two, are you buying more tarot than you're practicing tarot? So are you acquiring way more than you're actually practicing and using tarot? So in, in a month, have you purchased all these decks, but you, but you haven't even done a, a daily draw or you, know, you, you haven't even picked up a deck? Number three, are you searching for that air quotes, perfect deck? And if so, how is that search affecting your spending and your relationship with the other decks you have? Number four, how much is fear of missing out or FOMO influencing your purchases? Number five, how much of your deck buying is a knee jerk reaction or something that you're mindlessly conditioned to do just going on autopilot. Number six, are you buying expensive indie decks because you've been made to believe that they are better than mass market or that somehow you're less of a legit tarot reader if you're just buying mass market decks? Which by the way, that's all bullshit. Final question, are you buying decks to distract yourself from something that's stressful or unpleasant in your life. I am going to repeat myself because it bears repeating. <laughs> Retail therapy in itself is not innately a bad coping mechanism. But as a follow-up question, this is one that I do revisit, which is, is my coping mechanism an act of self-care or is it a crutch? Because I do personally feel that there is a line um, that we can step over with compulsive consumption where it turns into a crutch for avoiding some really hard truths or situations or feelings that we don't want to confront. And so we use compulsive consumption as a crutch um, and as a way to deflect. And in the end, that um, doesn't prove to be so helpful. So right now I am in a, a pretty good place. Yes, I have my ups and downs. I think that's completely normal. And um, for, for those of you who are struggling uh, with this and really trying to dive more deeply into um, the underlying motivation surrounding your compulsive consumption. Just know that you know, tackling this problem takes time and your trajectory is not going to be a smooth ride. It's going to have its ups and downs. But if that overall trajectory is on the upswing, you know, despite the little peaks and valleys in between, you are still steadily climbing that is a win. You know, you have to keep that in mind that it is, it's not a sprint. It is something that can take years, you know, and 
And you just have to be realistic about that and give yourself some grace and compassion. I know, if I'm being honest with myself, I know that I'm gonna keep buying and calling decks. Um, it's, for me, and I know a lot of people, you know, that's part of the joy in deck collecting, that we get to try new decks and that we get to account for our changing tastes and our changing needs. Um, so, and so that's why it's normal for, you know, newbies starting out, they go apeshit with buying decks because it's fun. It's a way to figure out what you like. And so it's actually very common for me. It's about the, the quantity in which I purchase and, and the mindfulness in what I purchase, not just X, but other things too. So I hope this was helpful and interesting and not too disorganized. I like, I just feel like sometimes I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm not re-recording this. It does not. So um, I hope you all are well and I will be seeing you soon. So until then, much love and take care.